Salam and welcome back to SomaliDispatch.com. My name is Abdul Ghadir Hussein Bouled. Somalia's electoral process is at near completion with multiple issues regarding transparency, delegate selection, government and security officials being elected into the parliament, and most of all, robbing Somali women's 30% quota in the upcoming parliament. To discuss these issues and way forward, we spoke with Halima Ismail Ibrahim and Ibrahim Mohammed. Halima is a chairperson of Somalia's Independent Electoral Commission, and Ibrahim is a good governance and transparency consultant. He also did some work with the NIEC. I have started by asking the chairwoman about the glaring irregularities with the yet to be completed parliamentary elections. And first of all, you can talk regularity or irregularity when there's um, laws and procedures that people they follow. And in Somalia, and that, that concept doesn't exist. Yes, we do have a constitution. We do have other laws in regarding to the election process. We do have a lot of and, and bylaws, and, but and the, the sad thing is nobody was following. So when you are following the laws, then you can make a lot of mistakes. And the other sad thing is when they make those mistakes, nobody seeks or nobody asks and about what is happening. Why don't we follow? Why don't we respect the constitution that all we agree to, 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 to conduct all our activities? So, and the irregularity started from the day that they dropped and they put in the trash can the laws. Everything which happened after that is irregular, and, and you cannot differentiate. You cannot say you cannot say this is a little bit regular or that is not regular. Everything is mass. Everything is unregular. That's what I would say. So there's no question about irregular asking about irregularity. Um, Ibrahim, um, given the, the the chairwoman's answer. Uh, to that question as it relates to irregularities, what stood out to you um, as you followed uh, the process? Uh, I'm thank you for inviting me. And I'm so glad that I'm sharing a platform with uh, Chairwoman Halim Ibrahim Ismail, the chair of National Independent Electoral Commission. She should have been the one conducting this election. You know, they say that if there are no law, there is no criminal. So in this election, there is no law they are following, whether it's from do some red or from Mogadishu or from the consultation. As long as you see someone is going to be nominated without election, without even the selection, if no one is allowed to run unless you have the blessing of the regional government or the federal government, it's not election really. Uh, the second thing is the National Independent Commission had dispute mechanism in two level. When there is an irregularity, there is a first dispute mechanism in the authority of the regional authority. If that does not solve, it comes to the federal government. Now, right now there are no uh, dispute mechanism. There is a namely dispute mechanism, but there isn't. There are people who have been told, you're not eligible to run, even though they registered, they were vetted, and they were ready to be participant. They were told, no, you cannot even stand for an election. There are people who were told not to fly and come to uh, claim your seat. So the irregularity became the norm. People talk about irregularity when there's a regular election. There isn't a regular election. Everything is irregular. It start from do some red when they said that federally mandated, constitutionally mandated into institution were supposed to do this election. When they said you're no longer doing the election. That's where it started. And every, every, everything else was down the road irregular, unfortunately. 
Thank you, Ibrahim uh, Mohammed. Uh, Chairwoman Halima, um, as we know, Somalia relied heavily after uh, certain, uh, you know, with having the state collapse, uh, relied heavily on the international community uh, to help to rebuild the country. And, and elections was one of the things that uh, Somalia leaned on, on the international community to help uh, with the, uh, the ongoing process. Uh, why uh, is it and, and what role could they have played uh, in dealing and making this uh, election better vetted and perhaps uh, lean on stakeholders to uphold to the 17 September uh, agreement? And someone that I was talking today with uh, was addressing this um, selection, an auction. This we cannot call you say an election, but selection is an auction. Someone that I was talking. And the international community, they are here, they are here to support Somalis and to to come out and, and stand on their feet and to become really an, an a government which which can which can rule their regulations itself. And Unfortunately, and, and Somalis are not working towards that. And when you ask the international community, why don't you do this? Why don't you talk to, to, to whether the federal government or the state federal state government this why don't you why 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 they why you are not talking why you are not and since you are supporting a lot financially and, and, and technically um, the response is this is a Somali process Somali led Somali own process we cannot interfere but we can support when they try to come out and stand to do their right things and that is their, their question. And when, when we were working and preparing the election and during the five years that we were start, that we were planning to conduct an election, one person, one vote in 2020, the international community really supported us, whether it's financially and technically. They worked with us, they were in following our step, what, what, what we are doing. And we had a lot of consultation and they give us, give us a lot of expertise. And Ibrahim was one of them who was working with us really. And we appreciated the work that he has done. And when he left, we missed him a lot, really. That is, I'm not saying because he is here tonight, but that is what and, and all the election and workers at the and also the commission. And but always there are some groups, some some people who are looking their own interest, whether they are Somalis or whether they are international community. So while we were working to prepare the, the one this one person one vote election in, in 2020, and in Nairobi. Some international community, they start to organize a conference, a meeting to come out an idea which is different from one person, one vote. And uh, they were thinking to go back to indirect election. And this idea of having a 101 electoral college to increase the number of elders who are selecting those in, in electoral college, and who are selecting the candidates, it came from there in that conference. And that conference was supported by, again, inter international community while they were working with us. I'm not saying that they were all of them, but there were some who did that. And it's not, it's, it's not something that I am creating. It's not something that people they don't know, everybody knows. And, and it was not international in those international community who were doing, but they have their allies, the Somali allies, Somali politicians who wanted to divert the election, one person, one vote, and go in indirect election for their interest. 
Maybe they want to be to to become candidates. They want to be president. They they want something without not something they can they cannot do that. So that's what I would say for. But and during this um, selection, which is very very complicated, it's not easy that people who are out, who are not inside the system. They could not understand and or they could not imagine what is happening in the electoral and, and posts. Instead mm -hmm. of having every candidate, every MB candidate, 151, 101 electoral college, and there's only one electoral college and they vote for all the MPs. Mm -hmm. They come, they vote, they go. Another MB came, same, same, they are not from their clans, basically. And the regulation was that the electoral college who are voting for an MB, they must be to, from his or her clan, but that's not working even. Um, that's, that's very dire and uh, it's always been uh, suspected that that's what was happening, uh, but it's good to hear um, this uh, from you, chairperson. Uh, Halima. Ibrahim Mohammed, if you could um, continue on this vein and, and perhaps, um, you know, estimate or, or, or guesstimate what Somalis could expect uh, from uh, the so-called auctioned MPs into the two houses, uh, what kind of um, ho hopes do Somalis have and what could be the result of having um, the set MPs uh, coming into parliament? You know, there's a Somali proverb that says that an illegitimate she camel will never have a legitimate offspring. This selection, auction, parliamentarians has been truly illegitimate in the eyes of the public. Uh, if I may add the question that the chair women uh, answered, the international community, uh, Chair Halima was giving them a monthly engagement to tell her where we are in the election, the rules, regulations, and the preparation. They knew everything we were supposed to do if we had one person uh, election, one person one vote election. They were supposed to send observers all over the world. They will be at each precinct location and the election, they will make sure the election is fair. And the public would have thought the election would have been fair. But right now, nobody can follow what they are doing. So they cannot help to correct the irregularities. To them, everything has become irregular, as I said before, and as the chairman testified. So I don't think they could have helped, maybe monetarily. But the Somalis see this as illegitimate election, and the government that comes out of this is going to be illegitimate. I hope it does not create a conflict like civil war, because people are not happy what's going on today. Right. Um, Halima, um, the most obvious disappointment out of all of this uh, to you and to uh, perhaps many Somalis is got to be how the um, stakeholders uh, whoever they might be, uh, regional or, or, or federal, robbed Somali women on the agreed upon 30% quota. Um, why do you think the international community specifically condoned that and perhaps chose over uh, the completion of the elections, not necessarily uh, to ensure that Somali women have representation uh, in the upcoming parliaments? And... Um... To my knowledge, and women has has been working hard to reach 30%. In 2016, it was it was really close to the success because we reached an almost 25%. And and an international community at that time they wrote, they play a big role really because they they said we are holding the money unless we see women seats. So 
give 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 uh, um, give the Somali woman the opportunity to become parliamentarian, and then we can support. That's what happened, and 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 and, and most of the success came from there. Although um, also Somali women struggled, and um, the committees who were existing at that time, and uh, and the transitional committees who were existing at that time, which was feed and see, and also um, the committee of um, EDR, they really worked hard comparing to what is happening today. If you look in that, in that angle. Um, but now I see that it's not happening. And although international community several times, they announced it, to respect the 30%, but I, we see that it's not respected. It's not respected, it's not happening. And, and, and bes besides women were working hard and going to the, to the leaders, but nobody listened to them. And an international community, they didn't play the role that they play in 2016. That's what I believe. But the truth is, this is this um, um, struggle and, and working hard will never end as long as women who are educated and who understand and, and what is going on and who knows their rights, they will continue the fight and we will, we will, we will reach soon a time that we get even more than 30%. But it needs a lot of work. Women has to be strong. They have to become together and they have to be educated. And they have to start working and from all the institutions. We don't have only to think and to become a parliamentarian, the 30 percent it's not only for the parliament, but it has to be all institutions in every in every angle. And that will come um, when the Somali male understand and believe and, and how the women are very strong and how they can support um, the development of some any country, our country. That is, we cannot go alone unless our Somali male understand and give credit the hard work that women are doing from home to the top. Right, um, Ibrahim. Um, you know, looking at the MPs that got in, um, despite how that process unfolded um included security personnel and other uh governmental staff uh that are to be sworn into the two houses um what can somalis expect from their participation in in the lawmaking and the legislation legislating the country's uh processes uh moving forward uh to Carter, one of the reasons the election was delayed again and again was uh the so-called commission that the government created was full of security people and the candidates were not happy. So they were not accepted. And the government insisted they keep preparing these security men who have been paid and bought for, for their own purposes. Now they are becoming part of the parliament and part of the government. It's even worse than when they were the electoral commission the, the, the creation of the Electoral Commission, the false Electoral Commission. So even though the way the election was handled was poor, when they include parliamentarians from the security forces, it's even worse because they still have relationship with their security forces. They can force, they can create, they can intimidate. So it's another added unfortunate to the upcoming government, unfortunately. Uh, Chairwoman Halima, feel free to chime in. But uh, as we move forward, um, is there 
um, any opportunity uh, to correct uh, some of these uh, glaring uh, irregularities and, and misuse of, of the process um, when the parliament sits or before they're sworn in. Is there an, any opportunity in the process to make some corrections? Um, there's always time to make a correction, um, but this time, and um, let us wait that they do the swearing of the parliament. They will elect their um, speaker, and the president will nominate the new president, incumbent president will nominate a prime minister, and then we will have the cabinet. And as a NIC, we have been preparing um, for, uh, for the election of 22-26. Already we finalized the strategic plan on 22-26. And before we start preparing the strategic plan, and we, we had a conference as a NIC and, 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 and see and talk about what has been, what happened last five years that we have been working and, and what kind of mistakes we did and what was the relation with, between us and the community, all this, that what the relation between our and, and NIC staff who are 200, almost 200 and, wow. staff, educated people really. And, so we had that workshop. We did that workshop and we, we found that all the um, irregularity or mistakes or gaps that we had, whether it was inside the NIC, whether it was the relation between the government, whether they are federal and, and federal member states, and also the connection with the community. How do they, where, where we went wrong, what we did wrong, and relating and contacting to the to the community, the Somali community. After that, we got a lot of questions and we answered a lot of questions. And based on that, we prepared our strategic plan because we look back also the strategic plan that we had in 2000, 2017 to 2020. We look at page by page what we haven't, where we went wrong, and now then now what we are suggesting is to have a conference on election, how election could be handled, how to start it, what kind of rules and regulations we need, what kind of um, what is the problems within the constitution which can make up can be obstacle to do an election, all of that. After that that conference, we went to that the participants to be all the stakeholders on election, whether they are political parties, whether they are civil society, federal member states, federal government, security, courts, all, anyone who is involved in the election. And to do a roadmap, and give that roadmap to the new government. A new government must be committed, committed to follow in that. That is the forward, the way that we can go and we can move ahead. That's what we think. I appreciate that. And um, I appreciate the both of you, Halim uh, Ismail Ibrahim, the NIC chairwoman, and uh, Ibrahim uh, Mohammed, uh, also for joining us from the United States. Halib is currently in Mogadishu. I thank you immensely for your time and your expertise and sharing uh, your ideas on what's going on in the country as it relates uh, to the parliamentary elections. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.